As you can see, beside me, to my left and to my right, we have some formidable challengers tonight. Um, I would like to introduce to you from the Hong Kong Schools Debating Council, Mr. Benjamin Allen. Uh, we also have Natalie So of the Diocesan School, Girls School, and Mr. James Lowe of Diocesan Boys School will be to my left and your right. We have our FCC Debating Club. Our journalists and associate member there will argue against the topic that this, so they will argue that they don't believe that the growth of social media is the single biggest challenge facing journalism today, and you will argue that it is. Something like Twitter, a user doesn't need to be held to a code of conduct. They no longer have to be held accountable for what they push out. We say the speed is so important that the idea of the accuracy, the principle of making sure your facts are right, verifying your facts, that has already been challenged by an age of users who don't care about that, ladies and gentlemen. It was wrong. Uh, and it's wrong on many, many different levels. I used to work for Reuters, so 150 odd years old. What did we used to do? We used to send messages of 100 characters. We still do that today. We send them over telegraphs. We send them with pigeons. It's just about how you get the news there in the shortest form possible. So what we're doing today on Twitter with 140 characters is no different to the challenge that journalists have faced to get you the facts as quickly as possible, but it's all about trust. What would you be doing? You'd be out meeting your contacts. You'd be on the phone. You'd be seeing people physically wherever it was that you could go. You'd be hoping to bump into people for the random chance meeting where you could get the piece of information that corroborated or set aside the argument that you'd heard about something else earlier on in the day. Now, if we look at the online websites today, the largest news websites, number one is Yahoo News, so let's look at their numbers. 110 million views per month. Sounds like a big number. Second, CNN, 74 million per month. Let's look at Twitter. 1.6 billion queries, as in search, hashtags, Syria, per day. Now, if we look at this, this is a hundred times of the largest news websites in the world. The scale is simply unparalleled. They're talking to a large audience that news websites will simply never be able to contend with. With journalists, before we write anything, before we go on the air, before we print, before we tweet, we are checking and verifying our sources. So when you read something that a journalist has written on social media or in more traditional journalism, you know that it's been verified. You know that people have actually gone out, spoken to the source, made sure that they are actually telling you the truth. Truth. So therefore, when you read something from AP's Twitter account, or you read something on the Times, whatever, you know that there has been a certain level of verification, and you can believe it. As I was going to mention, uh, when we had the Syria crisis initially erupting, we had a blog of a gay woman in Syria. Turned out, it was a bloke writing from Scotland. No one bothered to verify, everybody retweeted. It's a classic example of like, how accuracy can get blurred by people not checking the sources, and how social media, as a kind of well, a wonderful democratization of journalism still requires journalism to be there very much at the center. Okay, even if accuracy is being blurred, we say that this very fact that readers are choosing to follow different things, that readers are not necessarily following up on accuracy or anything like that, means that journalism in its professional sense needs to spend time trying to verify things, trying to cut through the noise, trying to challenge all the noise, as they were saying, out there, ladies and gentlemen. This represents man hours, this represents a distraction, and we are very respectful of the fact that all of you are here and doing such a wonderful job. We indeed hope you can roll with the times, but at this moment, regardless of what happens to professional journalism, social media represents a challenge, and that's what we need to prove on this side of the house. Thank you. Traditional enemies of journalism remain what they always were. Irresponsible journalism, phone taps, news of the world, sensationalism, people reporting without corroboration, checkbook journalism, state control. What about the state of the media in the glorious motherland at the moment with crackdowns going on all over the place? We say that apart from that, the other real threat to journalism is monopoly. Rupert Murdoch backs Blair in one election. Next he backs Cameron. 2007 in Australia, he backs Rudd. 2013, he backs Abbott, so the Conservatives are in. These are the traditional enemies of journalism. 
uh, social media is just one more assisting modern aspect to assist the fourth estate. Thank you.